This is a demonstration. Normally we measure the distance. Watch where the wheels come on. Keep up. He's in the unlimited class. Get ready for the ground to rumble and repel that airplane right into the sky. Seriously, maybe maybe plug your ears. Maybe. Seriously, get the wheel out. la competencia para ver quién despega más corto. Different approach to the same sole problem. Lightness. Lightness. Finesse. Finesse will watch his boots and Ellos utilizan un motor que se llama Rotax y el Rotax permite desarrollar muchísima potencia siendo muy ligero, muy pequeño y es una de las cosas que se puede lograr con estos motores aquí en, el, en la competencia. Ahora van a ver ustedes cómo aterrizan en la parte más corta. Van a verlo. Aquí viene. And put his wheels as close to that line as possible without landing before it. If we were simulating that in the sandbar, he'd be landing in the water, right? We want to get exactly to the line. Let's watch. Here he goes. A little burst of power, making it look easy. Really what do you think? Was it good? Man. Was it good? You specifically, do you think it was good? All right. Thank you. Man, I think even from up here it looked good. So okay, yeah, it looked good to you. He lands in front of the line is no good. Steve Henry now, base to final, to your right. Closest to the line wins. This is a just aircraft Highlander, one of the staples in the backcountry. A very capable aircraft, as you just saw on the takeoff. But can he also land really short? Holding it on the prop, tail flow. Beautiful. They're calling it good. So, como se dan cuenta ustedes literalmente pueden bajar el, la aeronave en un área muy pequeña y despegarla de ahí esa es la idea atrás de este tipo de, de operaciones aéreas es simplemente increíble se requiere una, una habilidad muy muy especial obviamente ellos practican mucho los despegues y aterrizajes en pista corta means that if they, this were competition, no go. That round does not count. So if we were in competition now, he would need to go again to get on the board. Here's Hal Stockman now. Slightly higher approach. Flaps down. Hal Stockman, the national treasure. He can often be found every morning at Oshkosh giving dozens of rides to the youth in aviation. He's super passionate about aviation. And one thing is he's also passionate about Ryan is safety. Absolutely. And that's why we are here to showcase the capabilities of these aircraft, but to show you that safety is the reason why we are here. We want to practice in controlled environments on smooth, nice runways so we can take these techniques and skills into the backcountry and have fun in the wild with these aircraft. And so the next round of pilots is in. Let's talk about the conditions as Brian Steck comes up to the line. Not super windy tonight. 
It is not windy, and what that means is we're going to have a little bit longer. Performance in the arena of about 125 feet. Here's Tony Terrell in the L21. Tony coming all the way from Texas, the River Country, America. Oh. So, Corey, one of the things you said is as we've got our aircraft now on downwind. Así que eso responde a la pregunta de cuánto necesita un avión para despegar o aterrizar. Obviamente son aviones experimentales, pero no les quita mérito. Te da la oportunidad de poder aterrizar y despegar literalmente en un área muy confinada. Ellos están despegando entre 100 y 125 pies. 100 pies en promedio de 33 metros aproximadamente para despegar. El aterrizaje siempre te lleva menos distancia, es el despegue lo que te hace que tengas la necesidad de más distancia. So, vamos a ver ahora otra vez una sesión de cómo aterrizan en pista corta. Aquí va. Here we come, high into the right with the lights are blazing, looking beautiful, Amir Biani from North Georgia. Absolute beautiful sight against the beautiful Oshkosh skies. Came out on the drop a little bit there, fantastic performance. Who do we got on the final now, Ryan? I was handed out posters, so I was, wasn't paying attention, Corey. I'm guessing it's... Oh, that's Tony. Is it Tony? Oh, no, Tony's at the end. It's Brian Steck. Oh, that's right. Brian we know Steck. what's going on. We're Who super wants pro a Brian Steck autographed poster? Here's Brian Steck, number 221, holding it on that prop, a little bit higher angle of attack, safely over the line. Oh, wow. Heavy on the brakes, and he's got it stopped. All right, you're looking at the slow flight capabilities of his aircraft. Watches that camo machine gingerly makes its way down to the line. Now you're seeing an aircraft that's deep, deep behind that power curve. You're going to see the angle of attack come up. Now one thing I want you to pay attention to is the tail surfaces of the aircraft. It's an indication of how hard this pilot is working to control the aircraft. You can hear him coming up and down on the throttle. It's taking all his skill to nail that line. Wow, sí. Se calculó que utilizan como 75, 100 pies, menos de 30 metros para aterrizar. Pero se ve fácil, pero en realidad es algo muy, muy difícil. Obviamente el avión está diseñado para este tipo de capacidades, para poder despegar y poder aterrizar en uh, pista corta. Lo cual te permite tener este tipo de aeronaves en, uh, en tu casa. Now, este que viene es un Cessna 180, este es, este es uh, más pesado, pero miren, miren la capacidad que tiene un Cessna 180. Corrección, era un Cessna 170, dije 180, es 170. Pero aún así, para hacer un Cessna y levantarlo en esa distancia, increíble. Así que viene aquí, es un Husky, el, uno de los mejores diseños. We got Austin Clemens at the line, flexing a little bit. I don't know if you noticed, he's there for a little bit of He's got some reverse thrust. Oh, engage that thrust reverser. So we'll see if he's able to get that done. Now, we have the creator of Arkansas, an event in the heartland of America in the world. Aquí 
que viene el 170 y como ustedes se dan cuenta, esto abre una puerta a otro tipo, a otra forma de aviación que pocas veces se ve en, uh, en la aviación general. Hey, Corey, what do, you, what do you mean behind the power curve? For those of us that might not know, what does that mean? Really what that means is you get the oh, airplane, you get it stopped. Geez. You get that yoke full back in the back. Es una habilidad increíble, es increíble hacer eso sin, sin capotear el avión. Es un Cessna 170, increíble. Here now, Kyle Bushman in this highly modified experimental aircraft. Look at all the flap. The flaps are the surfaces that are all drooping down right now. Lots Kyle of drag. Bushman showing what? the capabilities of that beautiful backcountry sequence. I think it's important to remember how big that airplane is. It is a monster that wing sits about eight feet in the air. If you haven't had an opportunity to stand by it and take a selfie, I highly recommend it. Austin Clemens now hovering in, and if he can get the combination right, get the workload right, we may see some reverse thrust on this landing. Austin Clemens just a few years ago was in the audience watching the school. Se dieron cuenta cómo él invierte la hélice y en lugar de jalar el aire lo empuja y hace que se detenga y vaya de reversa literalmente. Absolutely. The other thing is that came up. Someone shouted the question in the crowd. So, ahí lo tienen, mis amigos. Increíble. Tail wheels touches before Ejemplo de cómo se puede exprimir el desempeño de una aeronave en pista corta y confinada. Es una de las cosas que ustedes pueden hacer también cuando ingresen a la aviación en esta capacidad. Está disponible para ustedes también. Eso es lo que tengo para ustedes, mis amigos. Mientras tanto, por favor, mantengan los cielos seguros y divertidos. Please keep skies and fun. En Acción Exact. Nos vemos la próxima ocasión. Bye.